हेलो स्टूडेंट्स एंड वेलकम बैक टू द वीडियो लेक्चर सीरीज ऑफ वेब प्रोग्रामिंग टूडेज टॉपिक इज मेटा टैग्स एंड फ्रेम्स आई एम योर इंस्ट्रक्टर मिस श्रुति रावल सो लेट अस स्टार्ट विद टूडेज आउटलाइन द थिंग्स दैट वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी इन टूडेज लेक्चर इज मेटा टैग वट डू यू मीन बाय मेटा टैग एंड द नेक्स्ट थिंग दैट वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी इज फ्रेम्स इन एच टी एम एल एंड द लास्ट इज आई फ्रेम सो लेट अस स्टडी वट डू यू मीन बाय मेटा टैग बेसिकली द मेटा टैग डिफाइंस मेटा डेटा about an html document right we know that what is metadata meta metadata is data about data right so whenever you are talking about meta tag it is also information but of what of your html document right so whenever you want to give information to seo for example uh, about your html document you will use meta tag and the tag for uh, giving information is meta now basically you know that html document is divided into two parts that is head part and body part that we have already discussed that uh, whatever information you want to give about the html document that goes into the head part whereas whatever things you want to get displayed onto a web page that goes into the body part what is meta tag meta tag is giving you the information about html document so obviously meta tag will not be written inside the body of an html document instead it will be written inside the head tag okay also uh, meta data whatever you are specifying in meta tag that is not displayed on the web page because obviously you are not writing inside the body of the html document you are writing it into the head portion so it is machine parsable it means machine is able to interpret whatever you are writing in the beta tag but it is not displayed to the user okay also metadata is used by browser that is uh, it checks the metadata and also it interprets how to display the content or how to reload the page obviously the search engines uh, on web uses this keywords or this metadata information uh, for better search results right so let us see what are the different uh, attributes of meta tag so major attributes of meta tag are name and content attribute right so they are interrelated so whatever value i am specifying in the name attribute exactly that uh, attribute values content i have to specify in content attributes value okay that is a little bit confusing let us see what is uh, the example here is an example here you can see that the first meta tag i have written over here the name attributes value i have written description so if i am writing name is equal to description it means i am giving description about my html document right so the name uh, sorry the value is also fixed and the attribute name is also fixed so the uh, value of name if it is description compulsory in content what are you writing obviously the browser will interpret the contents value is description about your html document that what is your html web page all about right so that contents value is user defined so here i have written free web tutorials right because i want to say that this is the description of my html document the next uh, meta next name attributes value is uh, keywords so whenever i am specifying keywords for my name attributes value it means in content i will write the keywords associated with my web page right which uh, enhances the searching value of my web pages the next name attribute value is author so obviously in content what will i specify the author of this html document the next uh, uh, name attribute value is viewport so basically i am giving you uh, the scale of the viewport on which this web page can be viewable right so this where the name uh, and content attribute values which were interrelated to each other the next attribute is http slash equiv now this is basically used for http response message headers for example http equiv can be used to the refresh the page 
or you can also set the value of cookies right uh, it includes content type expires refresh set cookie etc values let us see an example so here you can see that uh, i have http equiv is equal to refresh and if i am writing the value as refresh it means i want uh, to refresh this web page after how many seconds the content is 5 it means after 5 seconds this page or html document should be refreshed the next i have written http equiv is equal to cookie right so it means i am setting everything related to cookie so content i have written uh, about the cookie also i have written when this cookie will be expired okay the next is http equiv is equal to content type so it means what is the content type which is uh, supported uh, by this http response uh, the content value i have specifying so okay in the content attributes value for example if the supporting uh, content type is text slash html i am writing text slash html okay and i am also specifying uh, the care set that is the encoding type which it is supporting utf8 okay so this was all about http equiv attribute and this is used for http response message headers okay the next uh, topic after meta tag is frames in html now basically html frames are not used uh, currently because there are certain methods in new technology or new html which has eradicated the frames at all together but in olden days frames were used in html to divide your whole web browser window into multiple section where each section can load a specific html document okay so if if you want to divide your whole browser window in two section vertically right so you will have at uh, at left hand side you will have one section at right hand side you will have one section and in both the section you are loading different html document then you can use uh, for such a structure you can use frame the parent tag for frame is frame set okay so here i have written the parent tag is frame set frame set indicates that how are you going to divide your whole browser window so you have to specify the rows and calls in the frame set and after frame set what are the child tag there are child tag frames right which indicates that uh, what html page i want to load inside the frame because i told you that the main purpose of frames is you are dividing the whole browser window into sections right for example i have divided my browser window into four section top left uh, top right bottom left and bottom right so i have four sections for dividing this whole browser window into sections which tag i will use frame set in frame set i have to specify rows and calls which will have this combination that we will see in the syntax now i have already told you that because you are dividing this into sections each section can load a separate html document for that particular thing you need a child tag frame so if you have four sections in the frame set how many frame tag or child frame tag will you require exactly four child frame tag will be required for loading separate html document in top left top right bottom left and bottom right portion let us see this is just an example of frames that uh, this was the whole browser window vertically it is divided into three part that is the first part in the left hand side the center part and the right hand side part also further the first part of the leftmost uh, uh, frame is divided further horizontally into two part right frame 1 and frame 2 you can see over there so this is how you can uh, define or divide the structure of your web browser window now let us see how to create this type of frames so i have told you that the parent tag is frame set the rows attribute uh, of uh, frame set basically defines the horizontal frames and the columns sorry the calls attribute defines the vertical frames okay also the 
every frame or each frame is indicated by frame tag and it defines which HTML document shall be opened into that respective frame. Let us see the syntax. So this is HTML start tag, HTML end tag. Inside I have written head. Then I have written frame set. Now you may wonder, ma'am, you have told us repeatedly that uh, HTML document is divided into two parts, head and body. Here you have written the head portion. Where is the body portion? Basically, whenever you are working with HTML frames, this frame set is a substitute of HTML body because HTML body understands only one web page. What we need to do here, we need to create different bodies, right? So that is not understood by a single body tag. So this is a mechanism in HTML, wherein if you write the frame set, you are not writing HTML body at all. Okay, so this is basically replacing your HTML body tag. So you are writing frame set, but not the body tag. Inside frame set, what have I written? Yes, I have returned the rows attribute and in rows, I have specified three values, 10%, 80%, 10%. What does this indicate? It indicates that uh, divide my whole browser window into three parts. The first part should be taking the space of 10% of the whole browser window. The middle part should be taking the space of 80% and the last part should be taking the space again of 10%, right? So uh, this is how you can divide the whole uh, web browser window into different section. Now, it is very easy to understand that if you want to uh, divide the whole browser window into two parts, how many numbers or how many percentage you will write? So, yes, two. If you want to divide it into three horizontal parts, three. And if you want to divide it into four horizontal parts, four and so on. Right. So this is how you divide your browser window into rows. Next, I told you that because you are dividing the browser window into three section, each section is considered as a separate frame and you are going to load a separate HTML document in each of the frame. Here, because I have divided my browser window into three parts, how many child tag of frames is required? Three. Right. So here you can see the first frame I have given the name and I have given SRC. Now this SRC attribute indicates source of the HTML document that I want to load into the first frame, that is the first 10% frame which is on the top. Second frame, if you write, that particular HTML document will be stored inside the second frame or second section of the browser window, that is the 80% window. And the last or bottom frames, uh, SRC document, whatever you have specified, that HTML document will be loaded in the last portion of the frame, that is again the 10%. Right. So here frame tag is used and how many attributes? Two attributes I have used. Name attribute for specifying the name of the frame. Unique. Uh, every frame should have different name. Otherwise, uh, there will be confusion. Uh, also, you are specifying the SRC attribute, which indicates the, where is the HTML document which you want to uh, load. Now, this is no frames. It means if your uh, browser by chance, if it is not uh, supporting frames, you can write this code and uh, inside the body of your browser window, it will be written that your browser does not support frame. This is optional, right? So here you can see that if I write this code, this is the uh, outlook of my browser window, three sections will be divided, okay? And uh, after loading, what will happen? there will be some data that I have loaded into the first section, second section and third section. So there are three HTML documents that I have uh, loaded inside my frames. Similar to rows, you can uh, uh, write for column, column, but the attribute name instead of rows is calls. Also, you can have this combination of rows and calls. That is upon you. You do that thing at your own, right? So that is your homework. The next thing or the last topic for today's lecture is iframe. Now iframe is not equal to frame. iframe is basically whenever you have a web page and you want a, a small window inside your web page wherein you are loading another document. 
so you are not replacing the whole body of the web document dividing them into sections and loading different html documents no instead you have a body of the html document but somewhere in that body you want some html document in a smaller window to be loaded then you can use iframe that is known as inline frame what is the syntax for iframe so again you have html start tag end tag you have body tag in iframe keep this in mind when you are creating frames normal frames and if you are writing frame set there is no body tag but if you are writing iframe it means you have a web page only one web page body and inside that body you are loading a uh, an inline frame right so here is a heading that i have written and uh, the syntax of iframe is the uh, tag name is iframe then you are just uh, specifying the source of the html document that you want to load so this will basically have such a structure in which you will have a web page and you will have such small window as you can see there is a scroll because this is an html whole document which has been loaded inside the body right and uh, i can scroll this html document irrespective of the other parts of the body because this is just an inline frame that you have loaded inside one html uh, document okay so this was all about iframe and this was all about uh, today's lecture thank you